Are you going to take that? No musers. You're going to take that? <laughs> KDE Plasma <laughs> offers the most advanced Wayland. Ooh, this fighting with. <laughs> Welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryan. Everybody watching us on Twitch, hanging out in Discord. Our chat bridge is kind of down, so we might miss some messages. If you are on Twitch, they'll pop up down there for our video viewers. And if it looks kind of uh, diseased and barren <laughs> this week, that's because people are typing in Discord, which is great, because I'm going to try to keep track of both chats, and I'll fail miserably. Stay <laughs> tuned for that we got a pretty chunky show for you this week. I'm kind of excited to tell you about a little bit of audio stuff for mixing. And of course, we got some information on some Minty Pipe wire. But first, Jill, you've been <laughs> diseased and decrepit. <laughs> yeah. Oozing, so, coughing, I crawling have, around, begging to be put into sweet release. <laughs> I know. I was bummed I couldn't make the Trackmania stream. <laughs> the last two two uh, streams because uh, I've been a bit under the weather this week. Uh, and of course, it's I'm sure due to the exciting last few weeks at the Southern California Linux Expo. <laughs> I think all you know, I was I was great for about a week after the conference and then it kind of hit me. And I think part of that was just exhaustion and excitement. And it just it turned into a cold. <laughs> Oh, joy. But my throat is much better today. So I'm happy about that. I rested it the last few days. And uh, you can watch the last uh, last week's LWW for my full scale 21X review with pictures and everything. <laughs> Good times. Yeah, we got all done. Uh, it's up on the YouTube channel. If you want to go back and watch the yeah. uncut version, there's the uncut channel for Linux Gamecast. All that stuff's hanging out, doing its thing. And, uh, I've been trying to do my thing. I've been trying to get caught up, but despite fate conspiring against me, I'm going to get that ARC A310 video. I got all the stuff filmed for it. I got all the voice work done for it. I got most of the graphics done for it. I got all the benchmarking done for it. Nice. I'm just sticking it together. I'm at like 60% done because I thought I was going to have that out. I had this crazy idea last week. I'm like, I'll have that up for patrons. And then I take a look at it on Friday. And I'm like, maybe I'll have it out on Monday. Here we heard them. A week later, I'm like, almost, almost, maybe by this Friday, I might be able to get it together and out tomorrow. If you want a little sneak peek at that, if you're one of our beautiful patrons over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast, I put that up. And hopefully this time next week, we can talk about what really does and does not work with Intel Arc under Linux mm -hmm. from somebody who spent two weeks poking it. <laughs> With my penguins. Doing all stuck. those benchmarks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and hop into it. Uh, Mint's been around for a long time. Mint used to be the arch. It did way back in the day. And when I'm talking about that, it's more in like the, it used to be the arch in the sense that it was the popularity. It, it was the one all the kids were using. All the new ones, the upstarts, the people coming to Linux for the first time. Like, yeah, once you get done with Ubuntu or if you get done with uh, Fedora, you're like, nah, man, I run Mint, man. Like that, yeah. that was, that was the humble brag. You're like, no, man, I'm running <laughs> mint. You run a mint. I'm running mint. Yeah. Well, mint's still around all these years later. And they got a version out with a couple of new things. Yeah. It's really exciting news. Uh, so in June or July of this year, the upcoming Linux mint 22, which is codenamed Wilma will be based on the Ubuntu 24.04 long-term support release due out this month. And Linux Mint 22 will be powered by the Ubuntu 24.04 LTS Linux 6.8 kernel and use the awesome Pipewire sound server as its default. This is wonderful because one of the, <laughs> the reasons why this is so awesome is that the Linux Mint 21 series has, has actually been powered by the older Ubuntu 22.04 Linux kernel 5.15. That's pretty old, which <laughs> was released two years ago in April. So what's cool is Linux Mint 22, starting with the newer Linux 6.8 kernel, will be so much better for supporting new hardware and a huge, huge but welcome change for Linux Mint. Linux Mint 22 will allow users to upgrade to a new kernel 
when Ubuntu 24.04 LTS point release is made available, which wasn't automatically available with older Linux Mint releases. So this is a, a big change in their organization and cadence of releases. And it's a very welcome one too. This is you know, really big deal for those of us that enjoy using Linux Mint and need the latest and greatest hardware drivers and being able to recommend it to new users. And, and, you know, for years we recommended Linux Mint to new year users. And of late, I haven't really been able to because it had such an older kernel and wouldn't work with some of the newer, uh, uh, wouldn't work, uh, all the hardware would not work out of the box on, uh, or say, uh, newer laptops or desktops. There, there was always a little bit of issue there, but it's, uh, going to work great <laughs> in, in the next couple of months. A couple yeah. of quality of life additions for this version of Mint. One that really stuck out to me is our old friend Gnome, you might know. They've moved over to GTK4, which is good. That's yeah. great. And the Mint team, well, they've decided to hack up a front end that works with not only GTK4, but GTK3, which that's mm -hmm. kind of a big thing. If you ever use Gnome, Gnome's got a bunch of great utilities. I give uh, KTE and Gnome a hard time, but especially with the GNOME project, there's uh, several applications developed from the GNOME team that I use day in and day out, just not their desktop manager. So being able to have that nicety for logging into your Google accounts and all that from GTK3 apps, good job, Mint team. Now, another thing that they've done, another thing that's really nice, mm -hmm. uh, depending on where you're sitting around, most people, you might just might not care because you know Ubuntu has officially swapped out Thunderbird, emo client, the Debian mm -hmm. package for a snap because reasons I don't know. Let's pretend snaps better or whatever. Maybe you don't like snaps. Maybe you look at that and you're like, I don't want my email client running in a desktop container. Well, the mint team's like, you know what? Yeah, we don't want you to do that either. So they are going to be swapping that out for an actual Debian package. Imagine that. So <laughs> uh, good job, awesome mint team. And of course, the move to Pipewire is going to be great for our, you know, people who just want desktop audio. You know, you, yeah. you, want, to, you want to play the games, you want to listen to your mm -hmm. YouTube videos. You're going to be in good shape there. Oh, yeah, that's fun. Good times. Now, let's talk yeah. about Fedora, GNOME, and KDE. Because, man, since the <laughs> beginning of time, in yes. the early 2000s, a good afternoon read was head over to Slashdot, go to the comments section and read an article where somebody was talking about GNOME KDE, there'd be a thousand posts of people <laughs> yeah. arguing, KDE is better, no GNOME's better. <laughs> and every time I see that argument in conversation, this is all I imagine on my ivory <laughs> tower yes. made of XFCE, because I don't care. However, <laughs> however, there's been a little update to the Fedora project there. Yeah, there sure has. Yeah, so this is a bit of Linux news and, and something real quick that I just noticed this week, and it's, it's a big deal. Fedora is actually proposing to change their default desktop workstation to KDE Plasma from the GNOME desktop. And then they would move the GNOME desktop to a separate Fedora spin edition. So, you know, keeping it one of the uh, their uh, spins, of course. But this is uh, really, really interesting. Uh, the Fedora team actually states, with the release of Plasma 6, KDE Plasma has developed into a high-quality, well-regarded desktop experience. Plasma has been at the forefront of creating a cohesive desktop platform that empowers the user to have full ownership of their computing experience. Are you going to take that, GNOME users? Are you going to take that? <laughs> KDE Plasma offers the most advanced Wayland. Ooh, this fight works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aw, well, I think they both, they GNOME and KDE do both do a great job with Wayland. So. <laughs> Not according to Fedora, they don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but I've been actually really impressed with how well the KDE Plasma team has Progress Plasma and they, how they have worked actually with Valve on the Steam Deck to get the KDE desktop clean and stable. <laughs> Pick and choose. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, GNOME has been the default for Fedora since forever. 
forever. Yeah. So this is a big move. <laughs> this is an interesting proposal. But yeah. I, I I don't know. Like I mean, like this is just a proposal. This is somebody's like, yeah. I really like KDE. We should run KDE, which will probably be met to IE, we run GNOME here. We're Fedora. <laughs> Let's talk about OSC Mix. Who's ever heard yes. of audio interface? You ever, you, <laughs> Woohoo! The, those words sound like moon speak. Probably not in the day of streaming with the kids on Twitch and uh streaming on YouTube and making home recordings. It's kind of a thing you do when you put together, you're building your own PC. You're like, well, I got to get an audio interface. And every now and then people still use their sound card. But I think more and more, you know, you run out and you want to get like this Scarlet or whatnot to plug in your XLR mic, to put it on your mic arm with your microphone and push it yeah. over to the side and never mm -hmm. use it. But you want it there because it looks good. And you're like, yeah, I'm the guy who walks over your house. And you know what I do? I go. <laughs> Pet that mic. Nope. I wipe the dust. the dust off of it, man. <laughs> just like, I'm like, you just got that for looks, huh? <laughs> it saves me the time for masking. I'm like, so what do you do? And they're like, then they got to try to come up with something. <laughs> um, audio interfaces come in all shapes, forms, and flavors. Even old ones way back in the day, like all the way back in like, I think 2007, 2008, I got a Motu 828 MK3 that internally, has a full-on audio mixer built into it. It has digital signal processing. It's got compressors. It's got equalization. It's got reverb effects. It's got advanced routing. I can make anything go to anything all the way back then. And they still make those interfaces today. But the prices usually start at a thousand. There are exceptions. You might know the uh, mm -hmm. Tascam 1608. I did a interfacing Linux video on that. It's got some rudimentary internal DSP with mixing. And I think it had a compressor. It didn't have an EQ, which was kind of sad. Or um, downward expansion. But when you have that functionality built into an audio interface, it is not class compliant stuff that you get to. You know, you got your class compliant. You can plug it in. You're probably going to be able to get sound out of it and sound into it. But when you try to access all those extra bits, they're just not there. What happens? You got to start doing some of the reverse engineering. You got to do a little bit of hacking on it. And that always gets my interest. And that's what Michael's done here with OSC Mix. He had an Army Fireface UCX2 running in class compliant mode. And he's like, well, I want to get a hold of all the fun smarts inside of this thing. And he did. And he managed to tease out all the bits that you need to access the onboard mixing, the onboard routing, and the EQ. And you're like, well, okay, that's fun. I, then I don't feel like hacking around in this console and like trying to, you know, type these moon glyphs into the terminal to get some effects that, that you don't have to. Because on top of that, he put the cherry on top. This is always the part that's left out of these projects. Very rarely included a full-on user interface written in GTK. OSC makes GTK nice. complete front end using OSC and it has all the bits you need. And I love seeing stuff like this, but that's not all. That's not all. I mean, this has got all of your volume faders. It's got pan. It's got EQ. I don't see compression in here. I'd have to read up on that. It's got echo, uh, sample rate. Great. Love to see it dim. It's got, you can set your clock sources on top of that. It's got a web UI just in case you need to access this through a browser cool. or um, you can do it yeah. with WebSockets. Just pretty cool. Pretty cool. Completely open source. Uh, always looking for people to come in, help test on it. Uh, it is very much a work in progress. And I got to dig into it because I remember reading, I don't know if it was Michael exactly, some early work that was going on in this in the Linux Musicians forum. I think they were using because uh, RME has an iPad application that allows you to control total mix through your iPad, which is good in a studio situation, remote situation where you need to make changes. And especially if you're using it in standalone mode. And they were sniffing the MIDI signals going out and trying to re-implement I think that was the basis for it. It could be completely wrong. Let me know in the video comments if you know more about this. But things like this get me excited. Why? Because I have an Army AIO Pro, which has all of these smarts built into it, and I would love to be able to access it. 
I'm like that is that is a big miss. You know, it's hard to get that sell because some people really rely on total mix from RME and this type of functionality. And that is just like, nope, not going to Linux until that's implemented. I don't know how difficult it would be or how much similarity the uh, Fireface UCX2 and the AIO Pro, because they're both FPGA based. Uh, maybe there's not, they're not too dissimilar. I might uh, be that guy and open the issue request and say, hey, <laughs> but getting something like this in the GUI. I and mean, so if you get a Fireface UCX2, which you might not, because well, let's be honest, you're looking at like $1,000 audio interface. But if you got one later around, plug it in, give it a try. All this is going to be linked in the show notes. And I love seeing stuff like this. And I, I want more like this. Uh, we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'm going to be doing a video on that because I have the new uh, Focusrite Gen 4 Solo and the first official release of the Focusrite Mixer. Uh, a gentleman who reverse engineered it and then focus what right got in contact with him and like hey we're going to help you out and through that application you can do things like firmware updates which is strange when you think about it now for your windows mac users you're like what big deal and like linux we're still getting used to the having functionality like that mm -hmm. that'll be fun to play around with. more tools more better happy to see it i'm just good times Yay. all around now we've kind of been lacking pie the past couple of weeks because there's nothing terribly exciting going on over there. You know, the Raspberry Pi 5 came out and you're like, all right, <laughs> that's about that. And we're just kind of sitting around waiting for something new. Well, we finally got something from Beagleboard. You might know the Beagleboard critters. Yay. Ladies and gentlemen over there, you know, small team engineers, they made the Beagleboard strictly as like an educational board that can be used in universities, completely open source hardware and software. Well, they got a new one out. It's called the Beagley AI SOC, man. Uh, and it's released mm -hmm. under Creative Commons license. Hey, look at that. Is it the most powerful thing in the world? No, no, it's not. Quad core, core A, Cortex A53 SOC, four gigajoules of um, system RAM, but it's 70 bucks. Yeah. What makes this price. one a little bit different? is it's got dual C7X digital DSPs, which deliver four tops. Can you believe that? Four whole mm -hmm. tops. What's a top? I don't really know, but it can do four of them. But what can you do with four to eight tops? Not, <laughs> not, not much. I, I actually did go back and look it up. Well, that's uh, when it comes to like AI processing, that, that's kind of like last gen high end smartphone territory, but it's enough to do, you know, machine vision learning, some simple robotics. And this being a Beagle board, you can just straight up get the design for it and buy all the parts. You know, it's not like um, where you're going to get PCB layouts from other vendors. You just don't see that. And yeah. You just go to Beagle AI and wait for openbeagle.org to eventually load, which it will <laughs> one day. Just being slow. Today. Maybe not during the <laughs> show. But yeah, you can get block diagrams, everything you need to like just print your own and a complete breakdown. You, you, that, that's so cool. I've always been a fan of the big board. And again, that's not, I, the big advantage to something like this is, you know, it is not using exactly the latest and greatest, but everything is made out of commodity parts that you can get without having to wait in line for a year. Yeah. And anything that you build using a big board, you don't have to worry about like, say you get a design from something for your company or you want to make a commercial product. You don't have to worry about like licensing or anything. You can just roll it out and you're done. Yeah. Good times. Well, you know, Beagle has been around for years. They were actually one of the first competitors to the Raspberry Pi. In fact, they used to just show up at the Southern California Linux Expo um, every year, starting from, you know, the mid 2000s. <laughs> so that was, that was always so awesome. And I'm actually really impressed with everything that is included on the Beagley AI single board computer for only $70. I was really just kind of blown away. Way. I thought it, for, it would be at least 100 bucks, but it's only 70 bucks. Now, one last bit before we get out of here. I like audiobooks. Yay. I have, I um, it took me forever <laughs> to get to start listening to them. I was never, um, somebody to listen to audiobooks and like i i typically read nonfiction. <laughs> you know i'm not a big fiction reader I, I, I i'm usually reading documentation let's be honest man we're doing mm -hmm. research on something but 
years and years and years ago, I did a uh, ad for um, Audible, not Audible, uh, Amazon for the Amazon Echo when those the little mini ones came out. Yeah, I did an entire so spot cute. for them, and part of my compensation package was effectively what I assumed to be infinite Audible credits. Oh, that's a nice perk. <laughs> oh, a lot of them, more than I'll ever be able to use, and. <laughs> I've always just had it sitting there, and I like finally like was like looking for something for background noise. And over the years, uh, you know, it started out as like, well, let me just find something to put on in the background to listen to while I was going to bed, and it started like that. And now I do listen to quite a few audiobooks. You know, I'll put something on, and I'll, I'll listen mm-hmm. to different genres because I'm not having to sit there and read. I can have it over here on the side, and I'll listen to like fantasy, you know, sci-fi. You know, to, yeah, some of you'd look at yeah. me and go, yeah, of course, that's what you listen to. I'm like, yeah, of course. Right. <laughs> yeah, we're nerds here. <laughs> and uh, which is good because I get to listen to a bunch of stuff that I'd otherwise just wouldn't have time to read. Uh, so when I saw this, I was like, Let, let's give this a mention. I'm talking about oh. the Simplicity Player. Why? Simply because it's got a big red button on it. That's pretty much it. However, uh, no, <laughs> that's what all audiobooks need. Big red button. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, I was very happy to see this. And uh, maybe an LCD screen, because that's what we're looking at there. If, if you're just feeling fancy, you don't necessarily need it. That's what the Simplicity Player aims to provide, and for good reason. This, this little guy, this block of 3D printed goodness, is there to help people with visual impairments be able to listen to audiobooks. None of the complexity yeah. of a tablet or clicking on things. Nope. Big red button. Got you covered. Got you covered. And maybe you're like, man, you know what? I'm morally opposed to big red buttons. Not a problem. Why? Because it's got an RFID reader that you can easily set up with cards and program it for books. And that's what this gentleman did for his grandmother. She's visually impaired. She still wants to listen to her audio books. Good on her. He can set up the cards, tap it, just give it a boop. It starts playing what you want to listen to. And that might sound like, mm, that might be a little difficult to manage. Not, not so much because it's got a remote web interface if you choose to use it. Very easy to get set up. Everything here, and I mean, you don't need anything at all, really. A Raspberry Pi 3A. That's all you need, LCD. Very, very cheap. Very easy to put together. This is their first uh, involved Python project. But, yeah, I mean, I saw everything here outside of, like, maybe... I I didn't dig around. I didn't see the uh, schematics for the box itself. But there is an entire pot. You know, put it in an Altoids tin, you know? (laughs) Yeah, Do it the old fashioned <laughs> way, just shoving an Altoids in and it'll work. But yeah, Simplicity Player, I thought that was a good idea. And um, that's one of the reasons I was so impressed by this project. It's, you know, really a wonderful device that solves a multitude of accessibility options for those with visual impairment and who can't read. You know, there are lots of uh, text to speech apps on Linux, which I use myself, but not an easy way to listen to audiobooks. And the Simplicity Player does it by feel, which is brilliant. That, that's what people with uh, visual impairments need. <laughs> Just It's one of the reasons why blind people use Braille. <laughs> so uh, the developer, Stephen Dej, you actually, this is, this is an ask. You might want to consider making multiples of these devices and selling them. Because lower cost accessibility open source devices are so needed, like Ven was saying earlier, and a lot of people would buy them. And because there's so many people out there who, you know, don't want to learn how to how how to set up the Raspberry Pi and and uh, cobble together uh, this device. So it would be nice if there was one we could buy in the store, and then I can I could recommend it to a lot of friends of mine who are completely blind. And those who are partial like myself. All right, beautiful people. That's going to do is we did a nice 33 ish minutes. So not too <laughs> bad. We got, we got in, we Pretty got a good. bunch of stuff covered. Yeah. But what we need to do right now is roll some credits and call it an afternoon. Thank our beautiful, beautiful patrons, our advisors, Omega and our Theron. We go straight to our patrons, our executive producers, Barbrandt, Scott M, Atomic Ass, (laughs) our Chicago Kicks people, Super Dusts Out, our Sea Monsters, System Team, Mark, DSNG, Joe, 
Death Notes, Stephen B, Dirty Dean, Back, Dodger, Rue, Turnover, Ogiwan. <laughs> I'm trying to get through these. Cherlings, Daniel, Burlick, A. Jade. <laughs> hey, thanks for hey. making this show possible. Let's have a finance it over <laughs> patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Thank That's you. where you can get the high quality version, the video of this. If you want, download commercial free. I put it up for you guys if you want to make use of it. Also, the live and uncut version of the show mm -hmm. is available in podcast format. And a bunch of other things up to and including access to our super secret Discord where this conversation yeah. takes place the other six mm -hmm. days of the week. And maybe some keys to come hang out with us on Track Mania 2 on Tuesdays and Fridays. There's a lot more stuff, but that's just like the big ones for me. Go check it out <laughs> yourself. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Thank you for making the show possible, each and every one of you. Also, Love quick you shout all. out to Basil Yay, for that 51 Basil. month Risa. Till yeah. next week, everybody. Have a great one. Bye, all. Love you, Mir and DeCresny and Artharen. <laughs>